Hello again, this is UML Operator. Have you ever worked on a platform and wanted to tailor it to your personal preferences? Or maybe you wanted your user experience to match your environment and mood. Or maybe you wanted to tone down brightness and colors to make things less bright for your tired eyes. Moods change and so should your tooling. Sparks allows us to set your visual styles and themes. Now we're getting into the fun stuff and making our tooling more visually appealing to our work and user experience. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything because that would take hours. Instead, we're just gonna to touch on the things that modelers that are just starting in Sparks need to think about when they're configuring and tailoring their environment. This session is gonna focus on the start tab and in the group appearance. We're gonna start with visual style, and then we're gonna to go to preferences, and then we're gonna go back and forth to dial in the appearance that we want to see in our Sparks EA tooling. Okay, so again, we're in the Start tab, we're in the Appearance group, we're going to select Visual Style. As soon as we do this, this dialog pops up called Application Look, and it provides us a way to configure the look of Sparks that we're going to be working on at various times, various roles, various needs. Now, some things to consider. Number one is you may choose a particular look, whether it's an office look and feel, a visual studio look and feel, or something else. But you want to be consistent if you're in a large team environment on the look and feel when you're collaborating and doing presentations. So that's just one thing to consider I want you to think about. I happen to like the Office 2016 look but let's look at Visual Studio 2019. We're not gonna choose anything else right now. We're just gonna hit apply. So you can see that it starts to take the look of Visual Studio as an integrated development environment in the look that you're going to be presenting. Now let's go back to Office 2016. And to save time here, I'll, I'll let you play with different looks as you're playing with visual style. Let's just say that, all right? So this is rendering, it's processing a lot of style guides. There we go, all right? So accent color, even though you're in this, you can change the theme of that to colorful. You can change it to gray, dark gray, black, dark sapphire. Let's go with colorful and let's hit apply. All right, you can see that it's providing a colorful feel, but you really didn't see that. Let's go back to white, apply. You know, you can see what it's applying to, right? I'm going to go to black, apply. <clears throat> this is when your eyes are tired and you just want to make a dark background. Let's look at dark sapphire, apply. All right, that looks pretty good, um, especially when your eyes are tired or it's late in the evening. I'm going to go back to white because I want things black and white. Apply. Right, and there you go. So you can change the theme anytime you want without changing the look. It's just applying a theme to the look. And you can change accent colors to meet your eye and visual needs. In any of the Sparks dialog boxes, there's a help button. And if you select this help button, it will launch the help site for Spark. Here's visual styles. It'll step you through what each one of the categories are within visual styles, give you some other additional information. So it's always beneficial to go back and have that on the side while you're going through this tutorial and while you're practicing yourself. Let's go into visual appearance. I'm going to skip over code editor, cover that in another session when I have Sparks alongside the code editor, the IDE, integrated development environment I'll be using, and I'll show that a little bit more. When you go to diagram, I usually leave the use current theme in that I've chosen. So when we get over to preferences, I'll explain this more as we're going back and forth. But you're able to actually change on the fly your diagram visual theme that may be different than the theme that you've chosen. And hopefully that makes sense as we get a little bit further along. 
I'm going to skip over workspace orientation. There's a left and a right. You can read the help. Um, play around with that. Okay, default node zoom. This is critical to me. Now, by default, it starts at around 100%. If you look over in notes, you see the, the size of the font is pretty small, in my opinion. Sparks used to allow us to roll the mouse button and zoom in and out. Now in the zoom, now they do notes this way where you can 90% is certainly too small, 120%. I go all the way up to 150%. Um, I need the notes nice and large, especially when I'm doing presentations and want my audience to be able to read intelligence data that we have placed under the elements. So that's very important. For the notes, you can also set the note editor font. So you have a plethora of fonts to choose from. You may have a lot more or less, uh, depending on what fonts you've loaded or your admins allowed you to load within your desktop. I, I just take the default. And to tell you the truth, I think it's Arial, but I'm not sure. I like Verdana. So if we come here, hit V, find Verdana, and then we hit apply. You don't see the change immediately in notes. You have to go out and then back in, and then you'll see the change. Let's go ahead and visual style again. I'm going to hit clear, hit apply. Let's see if we see the change. Hit OK, go back and forth. And yeah, I can kind of see the, the change that's there. As for checking, I usually have this checked off. I don't need to see the menu icons. Let me leave it on. Let's hit cancel. So if you right click on anything, you see these menu icons are popping up here. If I go over here, menu icons. I'm throughout if I right click, I get a pop up menu that comes up and I can see icons. I don't need to see those. So what I do is I tend to turn those off. Let's go ahead and hit apply. Okay. And now when I right click, there's no menu icon. So I don't need those. If you're just starting out, you want to familiarize yourself with the icons, you can leave this checkbox checked. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and check it off. For me, menu tabs using your caption style, um, I have this checked. Uh, if we uncheck this and hit apply, they're smaller and I don't like the look of these, but if you have a crunch for space, you, you might want to have that unchecked, but I'm going to go ahead and apply that back. Main menu tabs at the bottom. This essentially moves, this requires a restart, so I'm not going to do it. This moves these tabs down to the bottom of the work area. I like them on the top, and so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I'm going to skip over these next three property sheets, uh, use property list for elements, and increase note paragraph. I'm going to cover these when we get into other modeling and reporting features within Sparks. I want to get to enable concise diagram navigation. Now, by default, I believe this is checked for you. Let me show you. So if I have a diagram that has other navigation in it, so we're in this diagram here, right here, and let's say I want to point to another diagram, and don't worry about this, I'm going to cover it in another session, all right? We're going to put a hyperlink in here, and what we're going to do is go ahead and save this, and then let me minimize this, show you the experience. So right now I'm on this tab. I'm going to select this. It goes right to the diagram that I want to go to, or I'm telling my modelers, my teammates, my members or clients in a uh, presentation to go to it. You see this left arrow? It goes back. So I can navigate back and forth precisely um, within my modeling experience. So if I'm going to go back to visual style and I'm going to turn off enable concise diagram navigation, we're going to apply. Okay. Right now, if I launch this other diagram that I want folks to go to, it goes into another tab by itself. So this allows me to go back and forth this way much faster. And in a SQL environment, especially in the cloud, Sometimes the latency is a little much to be navigating back and forth if you're doing simulation or you're doing a demonstration to clients or other team members. And I don't like to do that. I just want to be able to hit the tabs and go back and forth. So when it comes to visual style, I have this unchecked, right?
And so that concludes this part on visual style. Now let's roll over to preferences. Because I don't want these videos getting too long, we're going to do pre preferences in a separate video. So I'll cover that next. When we get there, we're going to talk about, let me go ahead and close this and launch it again, preferences. We're going to be talking about general preferences, window behavior, diagram. We're going to touch on themes again, where you can create your own themes, or you can use canned themes that are here. And in that session, we're going to go back and forth between visual style and themes to show you the differences. Gradients, standard colors, appearance, behavior, sequence diagrams. We're getting into objects. Uh, the links between elements, how you can configure those. Communication diagrams, communication colors, XML specifications, more advanced subjects as we get into code development and so on. And then source code editing. I'm just going to touch on source code editing. Uh, we're going we're to cover source code editing when we get to a more advanced session. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.